Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'm going to be talking about scoping in Gmail if you're a drag and drop user. This is still a pretty good video for you to watch because you do have to check out scoping no matter what interface you use. So a couple months back YoYo Games did an article on scoping in Gmail. It's quite a long article and, why, and while it may be interesting to take a read, it's always good if there's someone to just give you the gist of it. So that's what I'm here to do. So basically when it comes to Gmail, you've got four different types of scope. You've got your local scope, you've got your global scope, you've got your instance scope, and you've got your explicit scope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into a project. Uh, it's not going to be that exciting uh, as any of my other projects. We're just going to be looking pretty much at the GML, the coding, and the scope, and stuff like that. So um, so do take note, this is a very theory-based uh, tutorial. So if we go into an object one, for instance, I'm going to tell you now about the local scope. So basically, local scope variables are declared using the, the var keyword. See, that's, that's V-A-R. You might have seen in other tutorials or just generally around the, the internet or during your use that uh, the VAR keyword has been used. Now, primarily a local variable is only valid for the event or script resource in which it is created. Now, you do have to note this is a very big thing if you're using legacy uh, versions of GameMaker, so that's 8.1 or below. Uh, temporary variables would only last that action. So if I create an event here and I say create and I drag in some code. Now, in the legacy versions, if I had to put in var a and then down here I had to do stuff with, with this temporary variable, down here, then it would only last for this one action. So if I had another action, another piece of code afterwards, and I do stuff here, that temporary variable from this first piece of code would not be able to be used in this one. This is one of the main differences between the legacy versions of GameMaker and GameMaker Studio. So in GameMaker Studio, temporary variables are limited to the event and not the action. So if I had to create a temporary variable, for example, in the create var a, and then I have to create a step over here that does some other stuff, just like that, this temporary variable will be able to be used in both actions and every other action within this action interface, but it won't be able to be used in the step event. So that's one big thing. If you're using legacy versions of GameMaker Studio, your temporary variables are limited to the actions. If you're using Studio, it's limited to the event, every single action within that event. So that's pretty cool. So if you're wondering, well, what, you know, what purpose are temporary variables? Basically, if you want to do some big calculation and it's going to change some other variable that your object needs that's very important to your object. Rather, do that calculation within a temporary variable, as long as it's within the same event or, or action. And then afterwards, you know, use that value in the temporary variable to change the other variable. And it also means that you'll save memory because this variable will occupy memory only until the end of the action or the event, and then it would be freed up. So if there's anything memory intensive that you only need for a short period of time, use a temporary variable. What I like to use temporary variables for is grabbing the instance ID of an instance that I'm creating on the fly and then I can give it all kinds of, you know, I can change its variables at that present time. So if I say var a equals instance create, see this is instance create code and then I just say x, y and here I say, well let's create object 2. And now that I've got this a here, I've stored this instance ID right in that a. So now I can say like a dot lives equals 2 or a dot score equals 7. I don't know. Whatever A's variables are, you can change them all here. So like A dot ammo equals 100. And then when A is created, it's going to be given all these values. And then as soon as this piece of script, this action code is, is finished, it's going to delete that temporary variable A. And then I won't be able to access it through that value A. So if I want to access it, I have to directly somehow um, call instance nearest or something to grab that instance ID again. However, we choose to and then manipulate it in a, whichever way we wish. To demonstrate how local variables are deleted, I'm going to do this and have a create event over here. I'm going to create var a and we say a equals hello world, just like that. Okay, then I'm going to say okay, then I'm going to add a draw event over here, add in code. We're going to say draw text x, y, string, make sure that's a string, and here I'm going to say a, just like that. So what we're trying to do here is we're creating a temporary variable, we're giving that temporary variable the string hello world, and then here I'm going to try and attempt to draw that string just wherever this is. So let's just make a basic room over here, uh, let's just do that, just call it room zero, and object one is just going to be smack in the middle. Now we're going to run this and I'll show you exactly what you'll get. See? We get an error. Variable get uh, a, 
and it says some stuff. It's basically saying here that it doesn't know what that variable is, where it exists. You're trying to access a variable that's no longer available, it's been deleted. So there you can see that in this object one, we are creating a variable in the create. Then, because this, um, because I'm using GameMaker Studio, this variable is getting deleted after this action is finished. And then when we try and draw it, it's non-existent. Now, if you were using a step event and you had to create a temporary variable, like this, if we had to put that there, delete this. Um, so here, for example, if we had to create var a and try to do this every time, notice that when it runs this action, it's going to create this temporary variable a, it's going to give a hello world, and it's going to exit. At the end here, at the end of the script, it's going to delete var a. Right? And then the step's going to repeat itself. And then it's going to create var a again, you know, temporary variable a, and then it's going to give a hello world, and it's going to delete itself. It's going to keep doing that. So every at the end of every step, all temporary variables here in this action code will be deleted. So that's temporary variables. Now let's move on to the global scope. So global variables are created uh, and referred to using the global prefix. So maybe in some other tutorials you might have seen me create a variable for something. If it's a controller, I use global dot I don't know, time or something. So basically when you put this global prefix before a variable name, it means that absolutely every instance in your game world will be able to access this variable. So this variable is not in any way tied down to a specific object. Think of it as being part of the actual game world, a variable of the game world. Right. So everything in existence can access this variable at any time. So it's really good for controllers, um, but do remember, keep this in mind, that global variables uh, use way more memory uh, and access time than local variables. That's one big point. This is because global variables remain in memory for the entire runtime of your game. They're not deleted when the object's deleted. They aren't deleted at the end of events, like temporary variables. They are there for the entire... As soon as they are created, that little piece of information will remain in memory until your game ends. Now, if you have been using GameMaker for some time, you may have noticed that there are several variables that are by default global, such as score. You can see it's red. Uh, lives, I think it's another one. And then you've also got health. See? These ones show up as red. They are reserved words, but basically they are very, very common global variables. So those are examples of global variables that are already in existence, you know, that you might have been using without even knowing. So you'll be able to access any of these variables at any point in time of the game, irrespective of what instances are active or in existence or what room you're on, all kinds of things. You can always access global variables from anywhere at any time. Then we're going to head over to instance scope. Now instance scope is basically the scope that you've been using the most. When you add an event such as a create and you bring in some code and you say ammo equals 100 or you know max ammo equals 250 or you know something like that. When you, when you create a variable and you give it some sort of value that you're going to be using throughout the life of this instance you know, of whatever object this is, these are considered to be instance variables within the instance scope. So anywhere in this object, I can call those variables, I can use them. So here I, I could say like ammo plus plus or something, you know, increment ammo by one or, or max ammo equals 700. You know, I can change these variables on the fly. So you initialize them and then you change them however you please, as long as it's within this object. If I had to go to another object and type in max ammo x250 and that object doesn't have a variable called max ammo because, you know, max ammo in, initialized somewhere in it, then it's going to be an error. So now you're probably thinking, well, how can I access these variables in this object from another object? And that's basically what explicit scope is all about. So if I have these ammo and max ammo variables right over there and we're doing stuff with them every step, then if I go to object 2 over here and I wanted to access object 1's variable called ammo, I'd have some sort of event, so a create for instance, I'm going to open up a piece of code. So the explicit scope is whenever you use the dot prefix in something. So if I had a variable called my ammo and I want to set it to the ammo of something else, of another object, I'd say my ammo equals, and then here I'd say object 1. So here I'm changing my scope from my local scope to the explicit scope of another object, dot. See, this is the dot prefix. And then here I'd say ammo, just like that. So it's taking object 1's ammo, and it's putting it into my ammo. But do note that because we are referring it to ob as object 1, if there were two object 1's, it would just grab a random one and give it the ammo. This refers to all instances of object 1. If you wanted a specific instance, you'd have to use certain functions and instance IDs to find that exact instance. Now, while you can use the dot 
prefix. It's better practice to use with. You may have seen with throughout the course of any videos. But basically, instead of saying myammo equals object one dot ammo, you'd say with object one, just like that. Then here you say my ammo equals ammo. See? So basically you're saying with all instances of object one, set my ammo to the, the value of their ammo, just like that. See? This is the best way to do it because all platforms handle this sort of explicit scoping completely differently. And if you just say as we did before, ammo equal you know, my ammo equals ammo, here we go, my ammo equals object one dot ammo. If that if I just say this, um, on certain platforms it would run completely differently and may not reach the desired results. So that's why uh, Yo-Yo Games recommends that you use the with keyword to sort out your explicit scope. So that's just a quick run through of the four types of aerial scope. Remember the local scope? So when you use the, the var keyword and that's variables only in existence within that action if you're using the legacy versions of Game Maker, that's 8.1 or below. Or if you're using Studio, it's for the lifetime of the event. Then you've got the global scope. You may have seen me use global scope multiple times. I love using global scope, especially on my controllers. That's can, that can be used by any instance of any object of, in any room, irrespective of which object's created. You can always access global variables as long as they exist. And any object can do that. Then you've got your instance scope. That's basically when you're fiddling around with your variables that, that are uh, of importance to each instance. Um, they are alive for the duration of that instance. You can only access them as long as that instance exists. And I suggest you do initialize your your uh, your local instance variables. You know, just in case you try to access them later and you haven't initialized them, it can cause several problems. But anyway, so that's the instance scope. Also, instance scope is just every variable that doesn't have the keyword var or global prefix. You know, then you've got your explicit scope. That's when you use the with uh, keyword, or if you use the dot. Remember that dot, so it's like object one dot something. So yeah, that's a quick rundown on those four types of variable scope. Hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you have any questions on this, just pop them in the description. You can find all useful links in the description too. Uh, for example, the actual tech blog 41 of this actual topic. You can read more about it, but you should have you know, grab the gist of it right in here. If you have time, check out my Patreon campaign. What I'm trying to do is raise some funds to support this channel in a small way. Uh, I'm looking to expand it with a whole lot of features and events and stuff like that. So give it a look, check out the goals and the reward systems, and let me know what you think. You can also like my Facebook page for news and updates on what's coming next and what's happening in the world of indie development. As always, happy coding, and I'll see you guys next time for another great game of control.